ओम शांति देर वॉज वंस अ मैन एंड ही वॉज इन सर्च ऑफ ट्रूथ सो ही वॉज गोइंग फ्रॉम वन प्लेस टू वन अदर ही वॉज विजिटिंग मेनी गुरूज गोइंग टू डिफरेंट पिलग्रिमेज प्लेसेस बट ही वुड नॉट गेट सेटिस्फाइड वंस वाइल ही वॉज सर्चिंग ही केम ए क्रॉस एन ओल्ड मैन दिस ओल्ड मैन वॉज सिटिंग अंडर अ ट्री द ओल्ड मैन वॉज इन हिज सिक्सटीज सो दिस यंग मैन वेन टू दैट पर्सन एंड ही आस्ट हिम वॉट इज द रोड टू ट्रूथ I am searching truth and I am not finding it. The old man said, "I can definitely tell you about a person who can enlighten you." And he gives the details of that person. His would be would be guru, and he tells him that you will find your master sitting under a tree. and he gives the details of that tree minute details of that tree and he also gives the minute detail of the master how the master would look what would be his robes how that tree would be the trunk the leaves and everything about the tree so this man this young man gets very happy and immediately leaves that place and rushes and goes to find out that guru but this old man also tells him one thing that your master would be very old maybe if you take my own example he might be 30 years older than me so this young man sets off his journey and he goes and for the next 30 years he keeps on searching his master but he could not find he knew where that master is he knows the exact description of his master he knows that his master would be sitting under a tree so he is searching both that tree also and that master also but for 30 long years he keeps on searching that person that tree but he could not find so at long last he thinks let me return back i have unnecessarily wasted my time 30 years is such a long time i have destroyed my business my everything and i went for this search so he decides okay now i can't continue any more enough is enough i have to return back so he decides to go back to his home and while returning he meets this that earlier old man who had told him or about his master and as he approaches that person he finds that the tree under whom this old man is sitting it is exactly the same tree which he had described 30 years back and this old man is exactly the same master which he had described so he approaches that old man and says is this the same tree and are you the same person who told me to search the master and you yourself are the master why did you waste my 30 years when you were the same person he says you were in such a hurry you had no time even to listen to what i am telling you had no time even to see that this is the same tree where i was sitting and i was i was the same master you were just wanting to search you were in so much hurry so you had no time even to look at the tree look at the master and you just rushed you have rather wasted my time i am waiting for you for
30 years. Now I am 90 year old. And I am, I was the person who was to become your guru. So, we are having, going to have today's discussion on one topic which has come in next Sunday's Murli. That is Hari, Vari and Kari. When we hurry, we actually forget to see things as they are. This is a sanskar of hurrying. So, hurry. Second is worry. We keep on worrying about so many things. And third is curry. Curry means it denotes oily diet, fatty food, or rather overeating. These all three things lead to unhealthy lifestyle. There are, in psychology, they describe two types of personality. Type A personality, type B personality. Type A means always in stress, always in tension, always worried, always thinking about future. Anxious, stressed. Type B are calm, quiet, cool, maintaining equipoise, that equanimity of the mind. So, curry, curry means curry, sambar. <laughs> so, let's explore this topic. Starting with hurry. What happens when we hurry? What happens when we worry? And what happens when we eat greasy diet, oily diet? All the three things sabotage, destroy our health. First of all, we come to hurry. Why do we hurry? Where are we rushing? What do you want? Why there is so much hurry? We always want to rush and do things. Once a centipede, centipede is a small animal with hundred legs. He was going for a morning walk. It was a sunny day and centipede was enjoying the sunny day and that morning walk. When suddenly a frog, who was of a philosopher, who was a sort of a philosopher, and when that frog saw that centipede, he was amazed. He started thinking how the centipede walks, which leg he puts first. There, he has got hundred legs, which next and which next. So, he was filled with amazement and he went to the centipede and said, Uncle, how do you decide which leg to keep first and which leg to keep next and which next? You have hundred legs. How do you manage these things? The centipede, who was a little old man now, uh, he said, uh, even I did not think of this any time before. You are the first person who told me that I have hundred legs. I don't know. But I will now try to count. And I will try to see how I walk. And from that day, that centipede starts walking. And he tries to think which leg I am keeping first and which leg next. And suddenly he wobbles and he trips and he falls down. And then he starts thinking, he yeah, have been walking like this all my life, I never thought of it. And where from this frog has come and given me this question? <laughs> this is Isab's, this is Isab's story. Isab was a, he was a very great storyteller. He has written this fable. It's frog. <laughs> so, he goes to the frog and says, 
please don't ask this same question again to any of my brother centipedes because of you i fell down the moment this question entered my mind and i decided to count and think a sort of worry entered me a question entered me and i couldn't find any solution to your question to this question and i fell down many questions enter the mind probably they are not necessary and we keep or we waste our time in searching the answers which probably we never get it's the best that they remain unanswered from where this dream of worry starts where is the starting point it is some question some unsolved mystery life is not a question to be solved but a mystery to be lived we have to live this mystery not keep on solving it all the time there are many scenes in this drama which are so beautiful we need to enjoy them rather than unfolding the mysteries thinking of unfolding them trying to know why they happened not needed there are many scenes in this drama which are just for enjoyment be a mute spectator of this drama coming back to hari the very first question is why do we hurry because we want to be on time because we want to rush yeah time is less that's why we want to hurry i'm talking of hurrying as a sanskar throughout the day there are people who keep on hurrying there are people who keep on hurrying they get up late and then they rush for amrit vela the moment they get up they find it is already late so rush one they have a train and they are busy with other things and then they see the time watch and then they rush so gradually this sanskar of hurrying the rushing this this habit becomes a deep rooted sanskar and we cannot get rid of this probably we have given so many commitments probably we have so many projects to finish probably we have so many deadlines to meet probably we have to finish so many targets yeah no time management so all this thing cause worry and you know worry hurry and this hurry is a state of the mind where worry comes anxiety comes stress comes tension comes so all these things are interlinked stress tension anxiety worry hurry everything we become anxious we can't sleep at night we have palpitation uneasiness we are ill at ease we perspire we feel sick everything happens rather than now thinking about the different causes of hurry which we all of us know let us come to hurry management how do you manage hurry the very first principle is decide to live a slow paced life there is no need to hurry there is no need to rush loud se is one of the greatest of the zen master he had said a beautiful thing look at the nature nature never rushes and yet and yet everything is accomplished with so much calmness such unhurried pace of life is a sign of yogi life so first thing is to reduce your commitments to reduce your commitments don't get overcommitted 
because that will cause you to rush to hurry reduce projects reduce meetings reduce multitasking reduce this wild rush this wild chase for something which is so much ill defined you have to slow down the pace proper time management probably we are not knowing the basic principles of time management few days back we had discussed about management of time meeting deadlines time boxing make a time table first second is time boxing third is organizer we should organize our life we should have we should aim to reach before time suppose we have to catch a train we should be before time before suppose we have to finish a target let us finish it one day before otherwise you have to rush otherwise you have to hurry then there is something known as time buffer what is time buffer time buffer is give gap some interval to yourself there should be some time gap between one work and another work you you should not try to cram everything into your daily schedule give time buffer there should be buffer another is disconnecting yourself from people for some time disconnecting yourself from all the digital world if you are too much engaged in all the social media then you don't get time then you have to rush then you have to hurry then there is a palpitation pounding of the heart your mind becomes confused and confounded so we don't want that so let's slow down the pace by reducing everything a good time management good time buffering good time boxing is needed prioritize things delegate things to others don't think that i have to do everything you have to distribute your work you can give to others delegate things prioritize things and yes most important thing if suppose you are not able to do a particular thing on particular day there is no need to create so much fuss about it you can do it next day don't pay so much attention to unimportant things it's good that you do things on time but it may so happen that you are not able to do that time it's okay you can postpone it for the next day so these are some of the things which we have to do so that we do not unnecessarily hurry in life because hurrying doesn't lead us anywhere a beautiful planning of the day dividing the tasks that is also there so all these things we had discussed in time management class here also make a aim that what are the reasons why do i hurry and where do i hurry where i have to rush keep the calendar in front keep the watch in front so these are few principles of time management see why do i hurry probably this should not this has become a sanskar a deep rooted sanskar and i must analyze it research it and remove it that is hurry second is worry we are worried all day what are brahmins worried about that is another question baba has said to us be a carefree emperor give all worries to me do not worry do not think that you are there when there is probably we are thinking i am doing everything that instrument thing is lacking i am instrument that's it he is doing it is his work he knows better when we 
become the doer. That time, worry comes. When we are not planning time properly, that time worry comes. When we are continuously thinking about the past events, worry comes. When we are too much anxious about the future, we are worried. When we are attached to something, that time we worry. There are different theories of worry, different causes of worry. It may vary from person to person. Every person is worried about different things. We are worried about our deadlines. And especially Brahmins, probably they might worry. They should, Baba has said that you should worry about effort. You have to do good pushat. You should be worried about this. That is the only thing you should worry about to become Sato Pradhan. But instead of that, we are worried about so many other things. The cause of worry may be financial. The cause of worry may be service itself. <laughs> service itself. Service is for enjoyment, for keeping us happy. But instead of that, then it becomes a taxing service. When it becomes we become burdened with service, then that is no service at all. That itself is the cause of our worry. Other people may be the cause of our worry. Let's analyze this worry thing and try to remove it. Try to work on it. We need to work on each and everything in life. Become Before it becomes natural. Otherwise it is difficult. First is to diagnose that I am worried. And then we think of what are the ways out. One is whenever there are problems, we worry. We have questions, what if, what if, what if. We need to change our approach towards problem solving. There is a good story about worry tree. There was one man who was a carpenter and his whole day he was unhappy. Everything which happened in the day upset him. And he was little worried. When he reached his home, the person, his owner had come to drop him by car. The owner saw that while before he entering before he enters the room, he took out the bag and hung that bag on one tree. And then he went inside happily. He was enjoying playing with his children and talking with his wife. So this owner called him back and asked him, What did you hung there? He said that bag was an imaginary bag that was carrying all my day worry and before entering my house I always make it a point that I hang that bag on that tree and then I enter and next day when I come back I take back that bag but I find that the number of worries are less now so he invented this new methods so this stretched mind, this worried mind, this stressed mind, we need to reduce de-stressed it to find out. We have to devise our own methods. How do we solve problems? What is my approach towards problem solving? There are people who write down, rather than going to bed just like that, write down all the things and then go to the bed. Probably by morning when you get up, you get the answer. That is also one of, the, one of the practices. Because if you keep on worrying for a long time, it becomes a habit, so that becomes a chronic worry. And that is the first symptoms of generalized anxiety disorder. Anxiety depressive disorder. Gradually depression sets in. Constant worrying, a stretched mind. And then the depression sets in. You get anxious for everything. You get anxious for everything in life. There is no peace, no respite, no repose. Just rushing. On hurrying on one side, hurrying and worrying, both things go together. And you don't achieve anything. This Brahmin life is a life of celebration. This Brahmin life is a life to congratulate everybody, each other, whole day. And to bid farewell. Not just to vices, but to worry, to hurry also to all the previous sanskars. This is another homework from next Sunday's Murli. List of things where we have to bid farewell. 
bye bye tata sayonara what are those things which we should give up we should say bye bye and what are the things we should celebrate or we should say congratulations to each other and to oneself and last is about curry curry means oily food greasy food uncontrolled diet overeating spicy diet a yogi's diet should be as simple as possible all the salty diet all the spicy diet all the oily diet they make the observance of celibacy difficult the simpler the diet the more stable the mind calmer the mind and otherwise on medical ground also when you eat lot of oily food gas acidity reflux belching high cholesterol atherosclerosis heart problems stroke heart attacks so many things happen oily allergies all the oils for that matter matter one question is did deities eat oil deities not necessary that 36 types of varieties of fruits uh, food has got oil you go to the history of oil oil how it started you go to the history of sugar how it started did deities eat sugar did deities eat drink coffee tea what is the history of tea what is the history of coffee is it really required this is just a question i am not making any claims this is just a question put forth for churning think on that <laughs> call of time <laughs> so all the oily food come under the category of rajasic food food are divided into three categories sattvic food rajasic food and tamasic food food that excites passion that time it is rajasic food so let's bid farewell to hari vari and kari and make our life full of merry that's what baba wants to be happy all the times but we have to bid farewell we have to say tata bye bye to all this worries of life all the stresses and tensions of life then only we will be able to be what we should be absolutely contented life life full of bliss happiness peace a slow paced life let us not count the number of legs and which leg is coming first and which leg is going next there is no need it is going on automatically you don't have to think he is there sitting above he is doing things to me if i start thinking what to speak what to do probably i am buried the disciples of jesus christ come to him and they ask him you told us to go and spread your message everywhere but how, what we will speak we don't know what to speak we have never given speeches he says go and stand it shall be given unto you at that hour at that time it shall be given unto you what to speak so don't worry don't burden your mind come ye all ye all that labor and i shall give thee rest come ye all ye all that labor you all who are laboring unnecessarily come to me i will give you rest carry me my yoke is mild carry me my yoke is mild so let's bid farewell tata bye bye sayonara to hari vari and kari and let's celebrate let's give congratulations to oneself and congratulations to other for this life full of merriment om shanti